Welcome back to Security Simplified. Last time, we talked about command injection, a type of remote code execution that happens when user input is concatenated directly into a system command. This time, let's go into a bit more detail about how to prevent these dangerous vulnerabilities. First, you can prevent command injections by not running system commands using user-supplied input. If you need to use user input within the system command, avoid calling OS commands directly. Instead, you can try using built-in library functions that serve the same purpose instead. For example, instead of using os.system make dir, you can use os.make dir in Python instead. And since user input can be passed into evaluated code through files that are parsed by the application, you should treat user uploaded files as untrusted, as well as protect the integrity of existing system files that are executed and included by programs. Alternatively, you can implement strong input validation for input passed into commands. The best way to do this is through a whitelist. You can either whitelist strings or whitelist allowed characters. For example, when you want users to be able to execute arbitrary commands, you can whitelist commands that users are allowed to run, such as ls and pwd, and only allows those input strings. When that is not possible, you can whitelist allowed characters instead. For example, this regular expression only allows lowercase letters and numbers and does not allow any special characters that can be used to manipulate the logic of the command. The length of the input string is also being limited to 1 to 10 characters. Finally, you can also escape values inserted into OS commands instead. For example, some dangerous characters that should be escaped include these. But this is usually less effective because attackers are constantly coming up with inventive methods to bypass blacklist-based input validation. If all else fails and an attacker does achieve command injection on your machine, what could you do to minimize the harm that they can cause? Being able to run arbitrary commands on a system means having almost full access to that application's permissions. So if you limit what your applications can do on your system, a single command injection using that application will not be able to cause serious harm to your system. The principle of least privilege states that applications and processes should only be granted the privileges that they require to complete their tasks. It is a best practice that lowers the risk of system compromise during an attack because attackers won't be able to gain access to sensitive files and operations even if they compromise a low privilege user or process. For example, when a web application requires only read access to a file, it should not be granted any write or execute permissions. Because if an attacker hijacks an application that runs with high privilege, the attacker can gain its permissions. In this case, you should limit the privilege of the user running the web server so that attackers cannot use it to compromise the entire system. Finally, you should stay up to date with patches to prevent your application's dependencies from introducing command injection vulnerabilities. And you can also deploy a web application firewall, or a WAF, to block suspicious attacks. And that's it for today's security lesson. See you next time.